Hello everyone, welcome. So today we're going to be solving a linear system of equations involving decimals and fractions. So let's just recap what we've done so far. Um, we've solved systems of linear equations. Probably the easiest way, can you remember, is graphing. And remember the intersection on the two graphs, on the two lines, is the solution. So the ordered pair x comma y, that gives you the solution to the um, system. The second method we looked at, it was an algebraic one, we did substitution. Um, so that's helpful in some situations. And the one we looked at last class most recently was elimination, also an algebraic method of solving a system of linear equations. All right, so, um, I mean, it's not too much different today. Decimals and fractions are numbers too. Um, our treatment is, you know, basically the same. We can still use elimination. We can still use substitution. We can still graph, um, but we just have to acknowledge that fractions and decimals exist and uh, we can still work with them. So the, the um, foundation, the principles still uh, the same, so same kind of procedures, uh, just a slightly different approach uh, when we're dealing with fractions and decimals. Okay, um, so let's have a look at this first system of equations. We've got two here. Um, it says we're gonna use elimination. Um, okay, so we have a hint. We're gonna multiply each equation by a common denominator to begin. So let's see where that takes us. Um, okay, so we have a denominator here, three, denominator here, two. So the lowest common multiple of uh, two and three, so multiples of two. Got two, four, six, eight, and so on. Multiples of three, three, six, nine, and so on. So six is our lowest common multiple. So we're gonna multiply this whole equation by six. So 2 thirds x minus 1 half y equals 4. So I'm going to multiply that whole equation by 6. And let's see what happens. So remember, I need to hit each term in the equation with a 6. So 6 times 2 thirds, right? You can obviously you can type this into your calculator. You can go 6 times 2 over 3 and then that'll give you something. Um, six divided by three, so you're going like six over one, right? Six divided by three is two. Two times two is four, so that'd be four x. Um, next one, six over one times negative one half will be three. So in other words, six divided by two, right? Six divided by two is three, that's y and then equals six times four, which is 24. Okay, um, the second equation, so lowest common multiple of two and four, what's that gonna be? So that's four, right? So one half x plus one quarter y equals five halves. So it was really great when I multiplied by the lowest common denominator um, it just got rid of the fractions. It was almost like magic. So uh, I don't know about you, but I'd rather deal with um, some nice little integers rather than, you know, this mess. So it's good to sometimes that, that option's available to us. So let's do the same with this one and hopefully it works out as well. So four times one half is two. 2x, 4 times a quarter is 1, so we got plus y equals 4 divided by 2 is 2, 2 times 5 is 10, good to go. So um, I know it's telling me to use elimination, but I'm going to go rogue uh, just because we most recently did um, we most recently did elimination last class. So I'm going to just kind of refresh our memory a little bit on substitution because today we're going to be switching up between elimination and substitution, whichever is kind of more convenient. So I'm going to take this, 
Notice I have a Y with no number attached to it, right? It's just like a one Y. So I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna isolate it for Y. So Y is equal to 10 minus two X. Okay, and so remember substitution, I can take that. This is Y, right? And I need to take that and sub it into the other equation. And then I, I generate a new equation purely in terms of x. So I take this, put it in there, and then it's purely in terms of x next. So 4x minus 3 times 10 minus 2x equals 24. Okay, And then notice we have a equation purely in terms of x. There's no y's in here, so that's great. I need to distribute this negative 3 in there. Running out of space. 4x minus 30 plus 6 um, equals 26x equals 24. So combine the x's, simplify that a bit. So that'll be 10x minus 30 equals 24. Um, add 30 to both sides. So I got 10x equals 54. Divide both sides by 10. X is equal to 54 over 10, which reduces to both divisible by 2, reduces to 27 over 5. So X is 27 over 5, or uh, as a decimal, that would be 5.4. Uh, okay, so now that I have an answer for X, I can take this and sub it into either equation. Um, I still need to solve for y, right? I have x, so what I might as well do is I have an, uh, um, an expression for y, uh, so I just need to plug x in there, and then y is already on its own, so I don't have to, I don't have to manipulate that equation any further. y is already on its own. So let's do that. 10 minus 2 times 27. Ah. 27 over 5. Um, okay, so that'll be 10 minus 54 over 5. Um, I need this to be a 5 as well, so I could change that to 50 over 5 minus 54 over 5. So then 50 minus 54 is negative 4, so negative 4 over 5. That's our result for y, which is negative 0 0.8. Okay, so I've got some really funky numbers here. Um, you know, you might be a little bit suspicious. It's like, uh, I don't know, shouldn't it be clean? Shouldn't it be like a nice little integer for our answer? Not necessarily, um, but let's suppose that I'm like not super confident that these are correct. So if you're working from home and you're trying these out, um, you know, maybe even you're super skeptical that you'd be able to isolate this for Y properly or this for Y properly, right? So if you're just like completely not sure, um, what you can do is um, try typing this in Desmos. So there's our two equations, two thirds. So you can see two thirds X minus one half Y equals four. Okay, so as you're typing the fractions, right, you just do a slash and then whatever number you want to do. And then to get it out from under, from under the denominator, you just do a right arrow, and then you can type your variable. So it's kind of pretty intuitive. So anyway, there's the first equation. Second equation is there. 1 half x plus 1 quarter y equals 5 halves. And there's the solution where the intersection happens. So 5.4 and negative 0 0.8, which is exactly what we have here. So that's a, that's a good way to check, right? So good. We have a, a method, we have a, a way to proceed when we have fractions. So, you know, same kind of treatment, you can do substitution, you could do elimination, just kind of, sometimes it's going to be better to go one way or the other. All right, so let's have a look at a few examples. We'll mix up the strategy. We'll do some elimination, some uh, substitution. 
And that's ultimately what you're going to be doing uh, when you're trying these types of questions out on your own. Sometimes it's going to be beneficial to use one or the other. So for this first one, um, not super great right out the right out the gate to be using substitution because none of my coefficients are one for the variables. So maybe I can do elimination. Um, if I were to try to eliminate x first, I would have to multiply, well, one possible way forward, I could multiply this entire equation by 0.3 and this entire equation by 0.5, which would work. I'd get them both to the same coefficient, but I'm ultimately having to do two things, right? So rather than do that, um, notice the y's are kind of a bit better because I can multiply this by something to match 0.6. So what would I multiply 0.3 by to get to 0.6? So I multiply it by 2. And I need to make sure that I distribute the 2 into each thing in the equation. Don't forget to get everything in there. So 2 times 0.5 would be 1, so just x. 2 times 0.3 would be 0 0.6y, and 2 times 0.2 would be 0 0.4. And suddenly, with this coefficient being 1, you know, it might, it might be reasonable for me to do substitution from here forward. Um, but, I mean, I can just eliminate these right away, so negative 3. If I just add these two equations together, I eliminate y right away, so I don't have to do any distributing. Um, so the y's gone right away, so that's appealing to me. It's less work ultimately, so let's let's proceed with that. So x plus 0.3x will be 1.3x. 0.6y minus 0.6y is just 0, so maybe I'll just leave that blank. 0.4 subtract 3 is negative 2.6. Okay, so that's great. Now we just have an equation for x. I need to get rid of this 1.3, so divide both sides by 1.3. And then we get x is equal to, what's the result of that? Negative 2. That's a nice, nice answer. Um, okay, now we just need to sub this back into either equation. Any one of these will do. Um, and then we can solve for y. So let's maybe try subbing it into this one. Why not? Okay, so I put, yeah. I put this in there. That's what I'm going to do. So 0 0.3 times negative 2 minus 0.6y equals negative 3. So 0.3 times negative 2 is negative 0.6 minus 0.6y equals negative 3. I need to get rid of this negative 0.6. So add 0.6 to both sides. Next up, we've got negative 0.6y equals something, negative 2.4. And finally, divide both sides by negative 0 0.6. Negative divided by negative is a positive. So y is equal to 4. And obviously we should uh, usually verify. So Let's try to do that fairly quickly. So let's sub the two, negative two and four into this first equation. So zero, verify, 0 0.5 times negative two plus 0 0.3 times y, which is four. We need to check that that equals 0 0.2. This result is negative one. This gives us 
positive 1.2. So, all right. Uh, these add up to 0 0.2. 0 0.2 equals 0 0.2. Good. Um, okay, and then we can do for the second equation as well. 0 0.3 times negative 2 minus 0 0.6 times 4 equals negative 3 negative 0 0.6 minus 2.4 so checking that okay um, that results in negative 3 so negative 3 equals negative 3 also good so that's equation number two that's equation number one it's one of those things like verifying is sort of time consuming and it's sort of tempting just to get your answer and move on um, but it's it's pretty like you can save yourself a lot of headache if you verify um, you might not necessarily be, might not necessarily have to verify algebraically like I've done here um, if you're at home you can type these graphs into Desmos and just do a real quick check make sure that you're on the right track and yeah so it's it's easy to skip this step and sometimes you make a sort of a minor fixable mistake and that's your opportunity to catch uh, if you've done anything like that okay moving on so here we have okay some point two times this whole thing equals two y so let's maybe just distribute this point two in there so point two times five is just one and 0.2 times negative 50, maybe that, so that equals 2y. Uh, okay, and then we have 0.2x minus 0.3y equals 0 0.8. All right, what should we do here? Um, okay, so I can multiply this whole thing by 10 um, so that will give this 2x 3y and 8 so I mean that at least gets us to um, some integer coefficients so let's maybe just do that as a preliminary step 0.2 times 10 is 2 0.3 times 10 3 and 8 so I mean yeah I don't have a situation where I can eliminate right away, but at least they're both um, they're both integer. Like yeah, all the coefficients are integers, so that's great. So that's equation number one. That's equation number two. Um, pretty appealing for me to do substitution, maybe because this is a one coefficient, right? So I can just um, isolate that for one. So we're going to go substitution this time. So isolate for x in that first equation, giving us 2y plus 10. And now that I have an expression for x, right, 2y plus 10, I can just put that into the other equation, wherever I see an x, and go from there. So we're substituting 2 times 2y plus 10 minus 3y equals 8. Okay, um, distribute the 2 in there, so we get 4y plus 20 minus 3y equals 8. 4y minus 3y is y, y plus 20 equals 8, and I last need to subtract 20 from both sides, um, so that'll be minus 12. Lovely. Okay, um, next we have something for y. So I can substitute y into either equation. Um, we can put it in here. Right, so there's y. I could put it in there into this equation. I could put it in there into that version. I could put it there or there. Okay, any number of options. Assuming I've 
converted this properly, that would be valid. And you know, I could do it. Yeah. So we got so many options. I'm going to go ahead and do it in this one. So 0 0.2 x minus 0 0.3 times negative 12 equals 0 0.8. So, okay, so 0.2x, these two multiply to give positive 3.6, that equals 0 0.8. Um, subtract 3.6 from both sides, 0 0.8 minus, point, uh, sorry, 0 0.8 minus 3.6, 0.2x equals minus 2.8. Divide both sides by 0 0.2. Negative 2.8 divided by 0 0.2 is negative 14. Okay, and you can obviously verify that. Probably the quickest way is to just type each of these into Desmos um, and check. But uh, trust me, that's the answer. So the result is negative 14, negative 12. That's the point of intersection. All right, let's go through a couple more. Starting with uh, this one, so 1 sixth. Again, it looks like we've got some simplifying to do here. So uh, we could distribute this 1 sixth in. Um, but I mean, the coefficients that are inside the brackets are already um, integers. So I can maybe just like nullify this 1 sixth by multiplying the whole thing by six over one. So when I do that, I just do that one, right? Because I haven't distributed the one sixth into each thing yet. So I only need to do that. And then six over one, same thing there. So this will give me four M minus three N equals 24. And I mean, it's not really too much of a hassle for me to distribute this negative two in because I just get integer um, coefficients out of it. So I've got n equals negative eight minus two m. Okay, um, I mean, we could choose to eliminate, but look at this. We've already got n on its own. So, I mean, that's quite a bit of work for us done already. Um, we can use substitution. I can take that expression for n and put it in there. So that seems to save us quite a bit of work. So let's let's go that way. So 4m minus 3 times negative 8 subtract 2m equals 24. I need to distribute this negative 3 into each thing there. And we just have an equation purely in terms of m, so I just need to solve this equation for m, and then we've got m. So next, negative 3 times negative 8 is positive 24. Negative 3 times negative 2, positive 6, m equals 24. Clean this up a little bit, so we've got 10m plus 24 equals 24. Um, let's get rid of this 24, so subtract both sides by 24. That gives us zero, that gives us zero too. So let's subtract 24, subtract 24. We get 10m equals zero. Divide both sides by 10, m is equal to zero. That's pretty easy. Okay, um, so that makes it even easier for us to solve for n, right? I can take this solution for m put it in there, or, you know, I could put it in there and solve this equation for m, or sorry, for n. Um, I mean, I still need to solve for n. n's already isolated in this version, so let's just go ahead and put zero there to solve for n. So n equals negative eight minus two times zero. That's just zero, so n is negative eight. Pretty simple. So m is zero, n negative 8. So if you're looking for a format m comma n, um, you can just write it as 0 comma negative 8. Okay, um, if you're going to check this in Desmos, I believe uh, it might not be 
willing to accept m and n as inputs for your variables. So what you can do instead is maybe you can just call m x and call n y. So if you're going to type this equation into decimals, you would go 1 6th 4x minus 3y equals 4. And for this one, you can go y equals negative 2, 4 plus x. So that's what you would type into Desmos if you want to confirm this at home. All right. So obviously, you can verify this algebraically. Um, you've seen how to do that a bunch of times, though. So maybe just to speed this along, I'll, I'll skip that step. But I would strongly encourage you to uh, sort of do as I say and not as I do. Verify. Always important to verify. So I've already done this on my own separately. So, yeah. Next question. So we have x plus, or x over 2 plus 2y over 3, so on. Um, we've got some fractions to deal with here. We've got some fractions to deal with here. Um, so I guess we can get rid of the fractions. So what would I need to multiply this equation by to get rid of the denominators here? And I want to make sure that I just multiply it by one number and it gets rid of all, all the things. So we need to search for the lowest common multiple of 2 and 3. Right? So again, 2, 4, 6, 8, so on. 3, 6, 9, so on. Lowest common multiple is 6, so that's what we should multiply by. Make sure 6 multiplies each term in the equation. 6 times 1 half is 3x. 6 over 3 is 2. 2 times 2 is 4, so 4y. Four 6 times negative 2, negative 12. Lowest common multiple for this one. So lowest common multiple of 4 and 3 is 12. So multiply each term by 12. So it'll be 12y equals 3x minus 12 divided by 3 is 4. 4 times negative 5, negative 20. Uh, okay, so I mean, looks like we've got a 3x here. That's pretty, pretty handy. And we've got a 3x here. So we're going to go ahead and do this by elimination. Uh, substitution wouldn't be the greatest choice, I think, um, because each of these coefficients, none of them are 1. So there's no obvious way forward unless we divide by some coefficient. And then we'll end up having to deal with fractions. So we're just going to skip that and eliminate. So the first equation be 3x plus 4y equals negative 12. And I'm just going to rework this formula so that I have the number on its own like it is in the first equation. The x first like it is in this and the y second. So what I need to do to get that equation in that form, I subtract x from both sides and everything else stays in the same place. So I'll have negative 3x plus 12y equals negative 20. And kind of nice, these are opposite sign for me, so I can just add 3x plus negative 3x is 0. 4y plus 12y, 16y, negative 12 plus negative 20, negative 32. Just one equation, the x is eliminated. So let's solve for y. I got to divide both sides of this equation by 16. Negative 32 divided by 16 is negative 2. So that was relatively quick and painless. Hopefully you agree. Um, okay, so now we just take this and plug it in. We can plug it into the reworked version of equation 1 or 2 or 1 or 2. So wherever you want to put this negative 2 in for y, you can put it there and solve that for x. You can put it there and solve this for x. Any number of ways forward. I'm going to go ahead and put it in there. So I know what y is. It's negative 2. So I put negative 2 in there. 
So x over 2 plus 2 times negative 2 all over 3 equals minus 2. So x over 2 x over 2 minus, because I got a minus there, so minus 4 over 3 equals minus 2. Uh, okay, so let's get rid of this 4 thirds. So add 4 thirds to both sides, plus 4 thirds, plus 4 thirds. 4 thirds minus itself is 0, so I got x over 2. And, and then negative 2 plus 4 thirds negative 2 over 1 plus 4 over 3. We need these to be in the same denominator. So uh, multiply both of these by 3. So that would be negative 6 over 3 plus 4 over 3. That works out to be uh, negative 2 thirds. So you just add across the top when the denominators are the same. So negative 2 thirds. And then as a last step to get x on its own, multiply both sides by 2. So x is negative 4 thirds. So final solution then will be negative 4 thirds comma negative 2. Done. All right, so steps to solve a linear equation, linear system of equations involving fractions and decimals. Um, you can multiply. Ah. <laughs> What's happening? multiply the equations by a whole number to eliminate the fractions or decimals. Usually helpful to multiply by a lowest common denominator so that you can multiply all the fractions um, right away in one step um, and then just solve. So solve using elimination, solve using substitution. Sometimes you're required to do one or the other and sometimes you have a bit of freedom and it's more uh, beneficial to use one or the other. All right, so you can try this out. Um, some practice with linear systems and fractions. Also try the textbook questions for the day and I'll see you next time.